Next time you come to Tel Aviv, try to see the buildings of the Templars, Sharona. They are Sarona. They are still there. But interestingly enough, they are adjacent to the main IDF camp in Tel Aviv and the buildings of the Ministry of Defense. A few years ago, amid a very ambitious engineering enterprise, those buildings were moved some eight meters to the south. They are still there, but the Ministry of Defense is bigger. If you like symbols, there you are. Our next uh, speaker, uh, Joel Kotek, teaches at the Free University of Brussels and the Institut de Tudé Politique de Paris. And he will speak about Zionism and Palestine in uh, Nazi caricature, 1933-1944. Joel, please. my presentation. I, know it's, I think it's okay. Here it is. Ah. Voila. There it is. Uh, I don't know how to see. It's in Hebrew. My God. Yaporama. Yaporama. Okay. Thank you very much. In a minute. Even I can I can see wow what, what a modern presentation. Okay, thank you very much. I will try to stick to the 20 minutes because I want to ask. I will. I was asked to. So my presentation will be more on anti-Semitism than on Palestinian Jewry. The cartoon that I will present to you will not speak about the reality of the Yishuv. They will show through a Nazi illustrated magazine, Kladderadach. The, fantast the fantasmatic perception of Palestinian Jewry, represented as bourgeois, religious, and or German invaders. The caricature show even more the dilemma and contradiction of Nazi Germans, of Nazi Germany, and especially more of the British Empire toward Palestine. I will present to you the whole corpus, around 45 cartoons, but I will not be able to commend all of them, despite of the lack of time. So to start first, well, it's very basic. So the 930s relationship between Nazi Germany and the Palestine question is widely misunderstood. The subject la lends itself to a persuasive kind of misconception. We tend to read the Nazi policy of the Second World War, mostly in relation with the Holocaust, but it depends how you define Holocaust or let's say the final solution. The Nazi anti-Semite and pro-Arab attitudes, the Shoah, and the fight against Great Britain make it difficult to imagine that before the war, the Nazi helped with Jewish illegal immigration into Palestine, and that Hitler was so afraid to displease the British that he prohibited, at least until 1936, 1938, we will see it, German support for the Arabs and the Palestinian mandate, as it was actually uh, presented this morning. So I will, I base myself more or less on Nicosia, Francis Nicosia, but also on uh, different authors, Jeffrey Hurth and Malman, and, and especially those three books. And I will quote, to begin with, Nico, Nicosia thesis, I quote, Germany's Palestine policy towards 1933 and 1940 was based on a fundamental acceptance of the post-World War status quo in the Middle East. For different reasons, the Hitler regime continued in the footsteps of the various Weimar government by identifying German interests with a post-war settlement in Palestine. That settlement embodied a growing Jewish presence and homeland in Palestine 
as well as the establishment of British imperial power over Palestine and the Middle East. It also represented the denial of Arabs' claims to national self-determination and independence in Palestine and throughout the Middle East. Between 1933 and 1940, and I put this in, in red because I will a little bit challenge this idea, German policy encouraged and actively promoted Jewish immigration in Palestine. It, I don't have it all. So anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism on one hand, and the ideological commitment to promote Jewish immigration for a Judenheit Germany on the other, pulled the Nazi government in opposite direction. This conflict existed for about two decades, from the founding of the movement until the beginning of the war. And so what was the, la the Nazi dilemma? Anti-Semitism, ideological hostility towards Zionism, derived from the conspirational vision of the Elder of Zion's protocols, and it was assumed that the future Jewish state in Palestine would constitute the center of the international Jewish conspiracy. So, I won't, but this is Hitler, a part in his Mein Kampf about Zionism, that his hostility towards the reality of Jewish state. Nevertheless, the ideological commitment to promote Jewish immigration for the creation of a Juden Highness Germany will prevail in order to get rid of the Jews. The coincidence of interest between Nazi Germany and the Zionist movement resulted in the transfer agreement, Avara, signed in August 1933. German Jews immigrating to Palestine were allowed to take some of their assets in the form of German goods, contributing to German export trade. Actually, the transfer agreement between Germany and the Zionist movement was initiated before Hitler's rise to power in 1932, and it was connected to the bringing government to mitigate the effect of the depression. So the agreement was approved by Hitler, who saw it as a way, as I said before, to encourage Jewish immigration, not just of Germany, but out of Europe. No doubt, one is to accept Francis Nicosia's assertion, the rise of the Nazi to power in 1933 left German Zionism with little option but to see cooperation with the regime that ultimately would tend to physically annihilate all the Jews of Europe. At least until 1938, the Nazi will in fact encourage Jewish immigration to Palestine, even preventing German newspaper from printing stories about the difficulties Jews face there and on defend the Arab cause. So I will, I will, I, I will reach now my cartoons, don't be afraid. This explains why a widely anti-Semitic newspaper, such as Kladera Dutch, would refrain to openly stigmatize the Yeshuv and or support, at least at the beginning, the Arab cause. The magazine illustrated the Nazi complexity and contradiction towards the Yeshuv, but not, of course, towards Zionism. So Kladera Dutch was, a, I think, maybe perhaps the first illustrated ma satirical magazine. It was actually published by a German Jew, David Kalish, but of course then it will become conservative. It will be bought by Hugo Stines, and then it will of course be Nazified as any magazine. And of course it was anti-Semitic. This is some example of cartoons. Well, you, you, you can see it, more or less. This is of course Trotsky, and this is 1923 already, in so before even the Nazi came to power. This is, well, representing France, you know, and uh, a Jew, and as you can see, the Jew is, uh, is uh, more or less portrayed as a demon. And this is about the boycott, just to show that Kladera Dutch was, what? But I have to go fast, unfortunately, because I've got only 12 minutes left. So, and this is not, this is the beginning. Uh, voila. And so, this is the first cartoon 1933, speaking about, you know, more or less immigration, Palestine, and you can see it's written, 54 Jews expelled from the United States, and then, you know, the reality, the Jews couldn't go anywhere, you know, all the doors were closed, and it said that, oh, what can we do we, if we can, where shall we criticize Germany? 
And this is another one, 1934. It means only one cartoons in 1933. 1934, it's understandable er error of a walker toward Palestine. And then it said, Oh, Father Abraham, thank you for driving me into the holy city of Jerusalem. And said, Daddy, get up. We have hardly arrived in Vienna. So this is 1934. What? Okay, if it's possible to lower the light. I'm sorry. I think those lights especially, no? It doesn't help? You can't? This one maybe... It's better? So a dialogue in Jerusalem, it's 1934. Have you heard that the Italians want to have the mandate on Palestine and say, well then, I already have my black shirt. So even if Hitler explained his sympathy for the Muslim in the beginning, Nazi Germany will avoid to play the Arabic card. As long as he hoped to avoid war with Britain, as it was said this morning, Nazi Germany did nothing to encourage Arab nationalist industry against the Palestine mandate despite numerous Palestinian Arab overture to German official and the vigorous, of course, uh, Ajib Prop of the Nazi diplomat who spoke uh, again about Fritz Grobe, who was ambassador in Iraq. So the most significant practical effect of Nazi policy of Palestine in 1933-1938 will be to radically increase the immigration rate of German and other European Jews and to double the population of Palestinian Jews. The Arabs kept, however, their pro-Nazi bias. In the vulgar wording of the German Council in Jerusalem, they were, I quote, too primitive politically to fully appreciate the fact that Germany and German Jewish policy were greatly intensifying their problem. So even if the Nazi strove to keep distance between Zionism and Arab nationalism, the cartoon were already fundamentally anti-Semitic. This one you will see better, maybe? So it represents, it's called trouble in the backyard, and say in Palestine, new riots between Jews and Arabs, and then you see the caretaker of Britannia, they say, ah, and I promise to Mrs. Cohn a safe residence. And then when you see how Mrs. Cohn is portrayed, she's really portrayed as, you know, more than, more than negatively, of course. Can you see, more or less? Maybe it's the first row. This is another one, Atmospheric Palestine, 1936. The pushy one, the hair, and you see the British tanks, the Jews expelled from Palestine, and then, you know, German Jews, bourgeois, you know, getting on with the British. Then, 1936, a leopard cannot change his spot. The Nazi were supposed to be neutral. Contrary to Nicosia's thesis, they were, in fact, it was, a fact, a very subjective neutrality. The Jews were more and more stigmatized, portrayed as, I would say, stroma like way, as opposed to the Arabs portrayed more and more with sympathy. So this is uh, the new Moses in Ferry, who told me to send the Jews to the Holy Land again. This is the cover, 1936. Then the cartoons, by stressing the contradiction of the British Empire, obliged to support the Jewish cause, showed the Nazis, if not the cartoonists, profound anti-Semitism. The fear that a sovereign Jewish state in Palestine may strengthen the imagine Jewish world conspiracy was paradoxically mitigated with their simultaneous prejudice that Jews lack the personal and racial traits required to build and defend a functionally modern state and especially an army and there are several cartoons on what is the Jewish army, how is the Jewish brigade and this if you can see it's the Jewish brigade and they are only interested to read the stock exchange journal they, are, they, they cannot stand in a line so I'm a dumb, and then you say, what's the news of the stack exchange? So the Harvara agreement met both the Nazi regime and the Zionist goal until the Peel partition plan, and on June 1, 1937, Frank Minister Neurath issued policy guidelines that for the first time raised the question of using the Arabs as a counterweight to Zionism. He feared that the plan could create for Judaism an equivalent to the Vatican for Catholics or to Moscow for communists. And this is, you know, the, you can see the Peel plan, 
and you see Britain trying, you know, to, and it's, and it's called a real, a pure Solomon judgment. Then the same, you see the British trying to divide Palestine, and of course, the British, they will take all the cakes and giving nothing to the Jews or the, the Arabs. So it's still more or less neutral, but look how the Jews is portrayed. Those are the Jews trying to convince Britain to build their state, you know, to respect the Balfour Declaration. And even if the Nazis sought to keep as much distance as possible between Zionism and Arab nationalism, the cartoons are already fundamentally pro-Arab. Then you can see Geneva, because it was the League of Nations, who satisfied again. The League of Nations approved the field plan. This is written in the title. The Jews remain modest in the shade and leave the place in the stand to his brother. And you see the brothers, of course, it's really not a favorable place. So again, it's called Falstaff. Then it's uh, another one. Oh yes, you can be fooled. The Arab, for my help during the world war, you have promised to support me. And what Britain your answer? The answer is, well, my boy, as an Arab, you should be used for fairy tale. Remember the 101 nights. 1001 nights, sorry. And this is the same, you know, in the laboratory. 1938, there is a shift. England does not want to hear anything more on the partition of Palestine, but it wants both parties to get on, on the same state. And so, Britannia said, the heat of the blowtorch created a red liquid, but not fission at all. And you can't see it, but then you see blood. You see Arabs and Jews fighting and killing each other. So this is again, you know, the riots, etc. Jerusalem main city of peace. And this is the 1938, February, the solution of the Palestinian question, a difficult problem. You know, trying to put a camel through uh, une aiguille, as we can say in French. And this is also very interesting, March 1938. Everything has already been said. It's Abraham expels Hagar and the, the Arabs. So it's connected, of course, to the story of the, of the Torah. And see, this is 1938. Again, the Jews tried to steal the camel of the Arabs, and finally it's the British who's going to steal the camel. And so a justified remark, the white book on Palestine, it's not so white. And this is John's dilemma. People's self-determination via Balfour Declaration. Down, we should never promise anything by writing. And have you got a place for me? And then British say, no, everything is full. No, mistake. So, 1938, the time of the revolt. Well, Ahmed, what is democracy? sharing the same handscuff. So after the Kristallnacht program in November 1938, most Jewish and Zionist organizations took the side of Britain and its allies to oppose Nazi Germany. After 1930, the Nazi gave less and less assistance to Jewish organization. And so you will see a shift. And then you will see, you know, it's Christmas. It's December 1938. And then you see more or less, and this is classical today, in today anti-Zionism, you see the Palestinians represented more or less as Jesus, you know, like Palestine as the new Christ. This is a very common thing, the same, December 1938, hey beautiful soldiers, do you want any money? And it's 38 pounds, like the 30 denarius, you know, of Judah, to destroy this beautiful star, and of course the beautiful star is supposed to be maybe the Palestinian people, the Christ, whatsoever. So 1938, Palestinian lottery. In Palestine, 10 inhabitant Arabic were arrested and shot by the English. The new fortune, there, sirs, there are 10 new gains in the drum. This is a representation in 1939 of the White Book. Uh, you see? The new Wailing Wall. Jewish crying, of course, because of the, of the book. And this 1939, it's clearly more Arabic compared to the previous one, 1936, because in this one the Jews receive the sausage and the Arabs receive nothing. Uh, and it was different three years ago. So it means really, and you can see also the difference between how the Jew is portrayed and how the Arab is portrayed. Okay. And the same look, the first one, 
it's written while England grant orders yeah, yeah two minutes justice and security in Palestine my god you're German so after the invasion of Poland and the beginning of World War II in 1939 of course the practical continuation of the Arab agreement become impossible and then you say hotel empire and you say Palestine Iran whatsoever all the different pieces of the British Empire this is a very very interesting you know it has nothing to do with my topic but this is to show you know the quality of the propaganda you know it's times and when you read in the mirror it's called semi and so the same the fact that it will be more and more British this is you can't see how they show the British art, the, the the Palestinian Jewish Brigade you know they say they cannot form an army so it's a mockery of the Jews again this is uh, Mars crowned by Venus again uh, connected to the representation of the Jewish army it's almost finished and this one is interesting December 1942 it said free the Jews said free the Syrians free the Iranians free the Moroccans but send the Arabs out of Palestine 1942 against representation of the Jewish army all the Jewish soldiers are in the hospital in the Riviere which is a terrible word for us who works on the Holocaust and then you see no soldiers in the front just the uniforms and so it's the, the last one is this one then my conclusion so I don't know why 1943 it's Tunis New York and it's called or army excels in Tunis they freed the local population and behind the American officer they represent Jews so my conclusion, as, as you saw, my presentation was more about Nazi representation than the issue. The cartoon I show you didn't speak about the reality of the Palestinian Jewry, of course. They show the Nazi contradiction towards Britain and Zionism, and even more, I would say, the fantasmatic, as I said at the beginning, perception of the Jews. The cartoon illustrated the fundamental hatred toward the Jewish people and the sympathy towards the, Ameri the, the Arab coast despite an initial neutrality policy. A leopard cannot change its spot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joel, for a very fascinating presentation. When I look at a caricature or cartoons, I usually look for some sense of humor. But here you have only mockery and, and demonization and hatred and twisting. So is there a sense of humor? in Germany at the time. After the audience. Yeah, okay. Our, like. our next uh, speaker, Jean Laloum, he is an historian.